Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the Daily Huddle. It's Friday where we talk mo money, but in a very specific way through leadership and business management. So uh, given that we have two of our favorite people, Harrison James on the line today, and uh, as you know already, Harrison James are becoming familiar faces on the Daily Huddle. There are a team that make up a fractional CFO enterprise. And in honor of all the numbers they deal with, I've got a silly dad joke for you. So Gio, the question goes to you, brother. Why do interest rates, why do fixed interest rates smell so bad, Gio? Why do fixed interest rates smell so bad? Because they're not going anywhere? I don't know. Close. But even though they're not going anywhere, they never change. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. That is terrible. Think about terrible. It. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's <laughs> better. <laughs> What are some of the advantages and limitations of financial forecasting? That's today's question. And uh, you may be a small business owner, even a solopreneur, and you're thinking, what on earth does forecasting have to do with what I do? Well, you're going to learn a whole bunch about that today from what forecasting is and how it can assist you in growing, even 10xing your business whether you're this big as one person or that big as a $50 million company or more. So before we do that, I want to ask you a few questions just to prime us and get us present. Good morning, Andrea. How are you? Good morning, Sorel. I am the way I say I am. And today I'm focused. Focus. Now focus, Andrea. Focus. Who are you going to hug today? No, I said focus, focus. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Andre. It's so amazing to have you here. You coined the phrase a few years ago that the daily huddle is a good habit to have. And I appreciate that you keep honing that habit and you keep being present to create the structure and the environment where people like you and others can benefit from that habit. So I'm grateful to you. Good morning, Stan Anderson, the man. <laughs> what time is it? And what are you grateful for? Um, well, the time, the time is now, my Daily Hubble family. The only time I've ever known, <laughs> the only time I think I'll ever be in any one of us. <laughs> and I'm grateful for the fact that I got now. I got now. Well, I'm grateful for the fact that given that you're here now, we have you. Thank you for being in my life and in our lives. Jill, I'm coming to you, brother. I want to see you search for where you are. Where are you, Gio? Hold on a second. Where am I? <laughs> I'm still here. You are still here. I'm right here. <laughs> Folks, there is nothing more precious and, you know, I guess ex expansive. It gives you the space to just be. When you hear, and it's now, and you're clear that who you are is who you get to say you are. And today I have the privilege of welcoming back to the Daily Huddle two human beings who are becoming fast friends. That is Paris Williams and James Williams. 
And I'm going to say just a little bit about them. And then they're going to dive into this world with us. We're not going to take you too deep, you know, because that world is vast. It is the world of forecasting and managing the finances of your business. And to create that with us, here are Harris Williams and James Williams, the former team called the Next Level Financial. They are co-founders of this enterprise. Harris and James are passionate about helping mission-driven companies grow their impact through strategic financial planning and analysis. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about Paris first. She's responsible for providing leadership for all aspects of the operations, emphasizing growth, setting goals, and supporting clients. James is a co-founder and lead CFO. What that means is that Paris deals with the people, James deals with the numbers. Is that it? Yeah. You got it. <laughs> but together, they form this uh, phenomenal team who do nothing more, nothing less, but fuel the growth of these businesses through their passion for assisting others and also through their deep expertise and knowledge of the financial realm. And uh, their clients are happy. And I know that today you're going to be happy to hear them talk about this. What are some of the advantages and limitations of financial forecasting? So who wants to go first? Welcome. Hello, ladies. I know you're going to go first. <laughs> ladies first. You know, um, we're really glad to be here. And I was thinking about your point that you just made about really it doesn't matter where your business is, whether you're at startup mode or whether you've grown it to a really large company and you're at $50 million, forecasting is relevant because this morning I was walking our seven-year-old to the bus and I'm nervous because school just started and I can't see the bus from where we live now. So I have this these moments where I'm walking and I don't know what's coming. So we're walking and I said, um, Gabby, oh my gosh, I don't know. The, I, I feel like I'm going to have to guess with this bus time. I don't know. And she says, mommy, you don't have to guess. We've been coming here for a few days now. And I thought, because me and James have been talking a lot about forecasting. I was like, she wants me to forecast the time of the bus <laughs> using the data that I have. This is amazing. This seven-year-old just said, basically, listen, if it came at 814 one day, 812 the next day, 808, we have an idea. And so I thought to myself, this is fantastic. She's hitting right in on our topic today of forecasting. Yeah, now, that, is, that is fantastic. Yeah. Is, I mean, is, that, is that actually now pointing to a definition of forecasting? So for a small business owner or a large business who's not been uh, in relationship with you, when asked the question, so what is forecasting and what is it good for? That is financial forecasting. And what is it good for? What, what do you say to that? Absolutely. I'm going to let James, the CFO, take it away. <laughs> right. So, yeah, I, I love that. And I love that example. Um, forecasting, by the way, is one of my favorite topics. And yes, I'm a nerd CFO. I love talking about it. And, Thank God for that. <laughs> <laughs> I love talking about it. Um, but one of the things that I like to do when setting the context for, for how I view forecasting is I like to distinguish between what a forecast is versus what a budget is. And those two are similar. They're cousins or they're siblings. Um, or one, you know, one, one sort of a, a brand of another. Um, but the way that I think about it is a budget is sort of, you know, is, is a, is your plan. For example, you start, you know, you start at the beginning of the year and you're like, okay, you know, what are we going to do this year in terms of our revenue, profit, et cetera. Um, and you write all this out in your, in your budget for the year. Um, and the budget just stays the way that it is. 
um, and some are good about coming back to it. Some, most are not. And, um, and, but when you compare that to forecasting, forecasting is more of a live, live and living um, document. It's always being updated. There's always changes in, in, in conditions and we need to account for those things in order to continue to give us the visibility that we need. So an analogy that I heard that I thought was actually really good to sort of distinguish the, the forecasting from budgeting is your budget is kind of like your, your plan. For example, it's like a map. If I said that, so I'm in Atlanta area, and if I said, well, I'm going to, I want to go to Los Angeles. And, you know, I can pull out a map and, you know, here are the roads that I can take to get to Los Angeles. Those, those, that, that, that map, that road, those things are set in stone. And, um, but the, the forecast is more like an upgraded version. It's like your GPS system. It's like your ways. It's like your Google maps. It's constantly updating when you're, when you're, when you, when you make it into Texas, and there are you're you're in the middle of of traffic or slowdowns. Um, your 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 GPS system will say, "Hey, you might want to go this way." You know, it'll save you ten minutes, right? So the the forecasting is always taken in consideration, just like the GPS, your current context, and allowing you to look into the future to what can get you to your goal faster or in a, in a better fashion. So and that's the way, that's the way I like to think about it. I hear something that I want to check in with you. Yeah. So it sounds as if for a business, for my business or any business, a budget speaks more about the constraints that either I have imposed or something outside of the business, some external constraint on the business. So therefore, we're going to spend X on operation, X on marketing, X on salaries. It actually says, here are the constraints. Stay within them to achieve this goal, but the goal is already set. I'm going to LA, I know that. Mm -hmm. Interesting, however, deals more with growing the business. Mm -hmm. Yep, yeah, that's right. So there's a lot of, um, uh, sort of connotation around budgeting, right? Because some people look at it as, well, you know, we have to make sure we stay in within this bounds. And generally, you know, that's the goal you want to. Um, but if you think about your budget as more of a plan, like, you know, this is where I think right now, based on everything that I know right now, this is what I think is going to happen, right? But we know that life happens. And if we live our lives constraints to your point, to where we're not flexible to make adjustments and changes, then we are going to be, you know, we're, we're, we're going to be limiting ourselves. We're not going to give ourselves options to invest in a new, um, um, you know, opportunity that may come up because we'll say, well, it's not in the budget. Well, if we're forecasting, then we can say like, okay, well, Here's where we are. This opportunity is coming up. What if we invest in this? Let's look at, you know, how that will work out. You know, let's see, let's see if we have the cash. Let's see what type of return that's going to produce for us. And we can change directions if it makes sense to change directions. But if we're to your point, if we're operating off of that budget, we can't change directions, right? Because we said that we were going to do this, you know? So in my analogy with driving from Atlanta to LA, what if I'm in, what if I'm in Texas or Arizona and, you know, I find out in LA or around the area, there's tons of fires, there's smoke everywhere. And I say, hey, that doesn't really sound like a good vacation to me anymore. Maybe we go up to the Bay Area. That's where I'm from, by the way. So we go to the Bay Area. And we drive up to the Bay Area and it's a much, it's a much better opportunity for us, right? But if, but if I stayed, if I stayed consistent with that budget or with that map, that original map, then I might miss an opportunity and I'm not as open to taking advantage of um, opportunities that could make my life, could make my business 
much more, much more better. You're on mute. I said, thank, thank you for that. It's, uh, it's so the budget is a fixed plan that I'm executing. Mm -hmm. The forecast, while it's a plan, I'm aware, everybody else is aware that it's not a fixed plan. It's mm -hmm. flat mm -hmm. flow with what's happening in the business and yes. outside of the business. Yes, exactly. You're taking into consideration what the current context is, what's, what's happened, what's happening right now. As the brother said earlier, I don't even know what's going on right now. Like when I, when I put together this budget, you know, um, on January 1st, you know, at one in the morning, whatever it was, that was then. And I was feeling a certain way at that point in time. And the world was a certain way at that time. But, you know, what if COVID hits? You know, what if, what if there's different things? We got to be flexible. We got to be nimble. And to the extent we're in the practice of consistently um, updating our forecast for changing conditions, and we're also looking at what we originally planned to see if that still makes sense, but we're not, we're not going to sort of live or die by that. Um, we, but we need to be able to make decisions right now based on the changes that are happening in our environment. So that gives us a good forecasting 101, right? <laughs> Theoretical. And uh, now let's take a moment, if you will, to look at the advantages and limitations of financial yeah. forecasting. I have, a, I have a question, sir. Yeah. Um, this is phenomenal, by the way. This is really great. I wish we had a, a lot more time. Um, <laughs> what? And I, and so I'll, uh, if this question gets in the way of what you are creating, we can leave it for a, for a different time. Oh, the, we're forecasting, Gio. Remember, right? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was just that was great. I was uh, um, very curious, James and, and Paris. Uh, if you could give us an example of some uh, predictable things that you've noticed that with the, with with your clients that are good signs for pivoting uh because i um because in my in in my world that before this conversation forecasting was a lot based on the past but this is mm -hmm. what has been happening this is an idea mm -hmm. of the future and and mm -hmm. and so now i have a whole new world to come from for forecasting i wonder if you guys have some examples for things where you say, oh, this is an opportunity now to look at taking a new direction. Yeah, yeah. So um, so company that I've worked with, they are in the um, real estate business. And um, and the, the plan is to, to build and develop an office building. So um, as you know, there was an original forecast put together for you know what it's going to look like, um, what in terms of the financial numbers, the returns, and all of that. And then as we're going along, um, um, we get news that there that steel prices are going to be increasing, right? And so, um, and so when something like that happens we can make a decision before we get to that point to where we have to, you know, sort of cut a check for, for, you know, for steel. Right. And that allows us to, to pivot. So, you know, maybe there's other there, maybe there's some shopping around that we could do in that case, or we could push up the time or we can move it up. And in the case that I'm talking about, because we knew that steel prices that were, were going to be going up, we had a short window of time to be able to lock in the price. So we said, you know, we need to move faster than what we had originally planned in terms of when we were going to procure uh, the steel. So that's that's one example of, of looking at what the impact is of changing in costs change in opportunity and um, and how that would impact your numbers, right? 
because it's not just an idea that, oh, costs are going up, you know, and so, okay, but what does that mean, right? And forecasting tells you what that means and how that's going to impact your future, right? And so we want to get ahead of the, the elements that are going to impact our future to the extent that we can, right? So that's an example. Thank you for opening yeah, that up, you. Giovanni. And thank you for the way you answer it. I'd love for uh, both of you, before we open it up to other questions, now bring it down to the level of, uh, say, the solopreneur or the small business owner who's mm -hmm. now saying, oh, my God, wait a minute. You mean I don't have to fly, quote, unquote, by the seat of my pants? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. I can actually move beyond budgeting to now look further down and say, where do I want my business to be? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and create a forecast, not a budget, that actually paints a crystal clear, quote unquote, picture of mm -hmm. that future. Yet, mm -hmm. given that I'm in this new context called forecasting, where I'm navigating waters to get someplace, based on a future I created with mm -hmm. my cast. So mm -hmm. how do smaller businesses get to play that game? What do, mm -hmm. what do you recommend? Yep. So I think about it. So, you know, in talking about and thinking about limitations of forecasting and why some small businesses or a lot of small businesses don't do it, um, um, a lot of times people maybe get sort of overwhelmed with the idea of, of forecasting because you know there's there's a lot of detail involved um, you know and people just sort of just go all out maybe they're excited in the beginning and they they forecast everything down to the the smallest you know level and then and then when it's time to update it they're like I can't you know I don't have I don't have 10 hours to update this forecast right so keeping it simple is really important um, particularly for the small business owner. Uh, if, and if you are the one that's going to be doing it yourself, if you don't have someone doing it for you, you definitely want to keep it simple because you got a lot of things on your plate. So you want to keep it simple and um, you want to make sure that it's that you're staying sort of, you know, grounded in, in sort of the reality of things. And you're not just saying like, oh, I, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to make, you know, you know, $13 million dollars you know, next year, right? That's great. Um, um, but, you know, have you made 2 million yet? You know, so you're looking at your context to see, am I, you know, am I in a place where, um, where, you know, you know, where, where, what, what is the wisdom that I can use from my past experience and apply that into what I'm doing and what I'm forecasting right now. So we so we tell people to, and this is where I start. What is the what what is it? What is the context? What does the past look like? I'll give you an example. At uh, one of my clients, uh, when I first started doing forecasting for them, they have a business where they have a thousand customers. Um, the customers are seasonal; they buy in different patterns. I didn't know that beforehand, but had I not looked into the context, looked into how the business works, looked into the data to see when when income is coming in, then I would not have known that. And so there's seasonality trends and that impacts you as you are trying to plan out your own cash, right? Because if you just say, well, they did, you know, I did $5 million or I did $200,000 last year in revenue, well, I don't know how that is, is there is that is that evenly or is there seasonality to it? So you want to apply some uh, some reality into the way that your own particular business works. So you look at the context and you see how that works. As I said, you keep it high level. You um, you want to focus on just a few key uh, a few key items for this is for the small for the small business owner. You know, number one. You're looking at your income statement. You're looking at your revenue. Like, what is what are you selling? What are you projecting to sell? 
So you, a little bit of that comes to for, from your history and you say, okay, this is what I've done in the past. But more so what you want to do is also look at what I call non-financial drivers. For example, I used to work with a, a home builder and we had investors and the investors wanted to look at my long-term forecast and they were, um, they would not have accepted if I said, well, we did 20 million last year. So we're going to do 26 million this year. Like, where'd you get that number? I just think that's what we're going to do, you know? So how do I get to that number is we're looking at how many homes do we think we are reasonably going to be able to sell? So what are the numbers? What are the units that are there? And so you back into what makes sense because you may not have, you know, 200 homes. And so you're, how are you going to get to 26 million? You know, you may have, you may be able to sell, you know, 10 or whatever it is. So, um, so being, looking at the, 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 the key drivers of your business, I'll give one more example, coffee shop. How many cups of coffee do you think you can serve or you can sell in a year or in a month? And, and you put a price around that, and then that becomes your revenue forecast. So that's how you want to look at your, your revenue number. When you're, the next number that you, that's important for you is your cost, your cost directly associated with the, with the revenue. For an example of a home buyer, a home, home builder, costs are, are wood, or contractors, land, things like that. So I want to identify what those costs are. And generally, the way I can do that is I can look at the, I can learn from, from the past and I can see my costs have been 50% of my revenue, for example. And so I can apply that and project that out forward. Now, from a forecasting perspective, if I, if I'm, if I know that the cost of steel or the cost of, of coffee cups are going to go up, then I may want to increase a little bit that cost. Right. And that's where the forecasting is coming in. So where you kind of you can understand. Um, I have a question. The, yeah. Go I have a it. question. Um, um, I'm just curious about something. And 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 thank you for uh, giving us this. You begin to open up the world of what is it that I'm forecasting? <laughs> yeah. And uh, man. Like I said before, I wish I had more. So we have to do this series, or I don't know if James and if Paris and James. Well, have, you know, we we, we've already talked about that. The next piece is going to be so. What does a forecast look like? What are the components? How do you mm -hmm. move about it? But really scale down and uh, made simple, just like James is pointing to. You're absolutely right. We're opening up a can of worms. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so, so my question, since we have to kind of wrap up, some, my question is, um, I would love to know a little bit about uh, Paris. How how did you find love for the world of numbers? <laughs> Thing. You know, as he was talking, I was thinking one of the points that I would make is we have to really think about and address our feelings about the numbers because we can understand things intellectually and say, oh, yes, that makes a lot of sense. But as we were talking about before we got on, there's also an emotional component with our businesses and the way that we feel about it. And sometimes the reason why we are making these great projections and have such high hopes is because it's an emotional decision and it's not necessarily coming from that data. So um, I think it's in process with me falling in love with the numbers, to be very honest with you. I love a numbers guy oh, named James, <laughs> but it's a journey for being in love with the numbers. And I think I understand now that um, it's good to have people on a team with you. It, that, that's, that's what it is. I mean, even if you're a solopreneur, to your point, it's um, having somebody as your accountability person that you can say, hey, here's my budget. Here's where I'm thinking I'll go with my forecast. No matter how simple it is, I think you should just start small and you fall in love with the numbers over time. It's a journey. So 
that's that's what I think about falling in love with the numbers. Um, it started with a guy named James. <laughs> <laughs> uh time does fly it's uh it's already 9 31 so uh not i'm not gonna say not to cut you off because i know i'm cutting you off because right? <laughs> there's so much more to say uh I, i'll 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 give each of you the opportunity to say one phrase connected to the advantages or the limitations of financial forecasting focused on what that means for a small business owner. So, so you want one is, phrase with that big question? Can you give a oh, Yes, question? one phrase. <laughs> one phrase. Watch, watch this. Watch this. So like, give us one phrase of why you love your children. <laughs> <laughs> <What>? <laughs> You'll be amazed what the constraint of time what time constraints do. <laughs> what do you want to say? <laughs> So I, um, I, you know, as I said, this was one of my favorite topics, and I, um, I found this quote by Abraham Lincoln, and he says, "The most reliable way to predict the future is to create it." I say, uh, uh, "Your forecast is your most reliable companion on the road to your future." Bingo. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to give him the last word. I think that we should end on that note. We should end on that note. <laughs> well, folks, if not if, I know you are not just intrigued, but really connecting to what it's like for you to be emotionally connected to your business and yet not have the decisions you make that are so critical be driven only by your emotions. Financial forecasting, as you're starting to uh, discover, is the opportunity to marry your emotion for your business and your love for your business with the kind of predictability and reliability that renders you and the people you work with accountable in a way that winging it or flying by the seat of your pants just doesn't afford you. So uh, I I know you're here. So. I'm inviting you on August 12th to join the cast of hosts and co-hosts of The Daily Huddle for more of this. It's a day packed full of what you need to grow your business and what you need to grow personally. We'll start with Zach and Kimberly, who will give you a dose of what it looks like to make money and make lots of it. Then we'll work with Catherine and Tara, who will create a space where the type of human being you are is one who communicates in such a way that your relationships are never, ever superficial. Every relationship you have inside of that realm is deeply connected and meaningful. And then Dr. Monica Ogando is going to take you through a little trip of what it looks like to be connected to something bigger than you. Then at the end, I'll have the opportunity to wrap it all up and create the opportunity for you to have a dream for your business and your life and see very clearly in front of you the pathway to achieving that dream with confidence. That's August 12th. To boot, there's going to be a food truck with tacos from Beto's Taco. And uh, Steel, Chase Steel Gray, our host for Tuesday, has a special surprise for everyone. So go to thedailyhuddleevent.com and register to participate. The price is only $27. And yes, we made it $27. So the whole state can come. No excuses. <laughs> thedailyhuddleevent.com. Giovanni would love to see you there. I'd love to see you there more. We're closing out right now with our eight tenets. I'm inviting you to love. I'm inviting you to laugh out loud. Eat mostly plant-based. Stress less. Give everything you've got. Sleep, move your body, and for God's sakes, check your assumptions. And if you don't know what your assumptions are, look at your forecast. 
That's our show. (laughs) (laughs) That's our show, folks. I'll see you Monday morning, and I will see you live on August 12th. Thank you.